Thank you for purchasing a nice rink 20 by 40 rink in the box. Obviously you've already found your instructional DVD inside, but we're going to start from the beginning and let you know exactly how to build a 20 by 40 nice rink rink in the box. It's the best system out there, just to unlevel yards. We'll show you how to level the yard and everything and get you going and keep you on the straight and narrow to make sure that your rink is successful this year. You'll find your nice rink liner. This is a 24 by 44 liner. It'll accommodate your 20 by 40 rink. So we'll put that on the side right now because we don't need it yet. That's the last thing to go in. Also in the box, you'll find your nice rink goodie bag. You have a nice rink catalog, which has all of our other accessories and items inside that you can take a look at. We've got our nice rink patch tape, which is excellent for repairing the liner. If you have any holes in your liner, cuts, if there's any, uh, even shipping damage, if there's a little hole in it. This patch tape on both sides will patch it up even tougher than the liner itself is. We have a Bobby Hall Nice Rink uh, Stats card. It's got stats on the back. We have your instructional DVD, which obviously you already have in your DVD player, so watch that thoroughly. Got a Nice Rink Hockey Puck. Nice Rink Repair Glue for underwater cuts during the season in case you have any accidents. Got your four corner brackets in case you have a deep side so we can hold the corners of the rink together. And we've got some nice rink stickers. And most importantly, the patented nice rink bracket. This is an excellent tool for building backyard ice rinks. It has all the support that you need, provides everything you need with no tools, other equipment, as long as the pitch isn't more than 10 inches. So speaking of pitch, we're going to check our pitch right now and see what our yard looks like. Okay, these are some items that are not included with the ring kit that you have to pick up from the store. Get some metal stakes. These are real heavy duty stakes for the nice ring brackets. You don't need quite this heavy to stake out your ring. You want to pick up a laser level to check your pitch. You can use a laser level. This one runs anywhere from $10 to $20. You can use a line level. Got this one for $1.99. Very inexpensive. And I also picked up this string line to run your corners and such and it came with a line level. And this was, I believe, $11.99 today. And then you got tape measures. This is a 100 foot measure. Probably don't need that with a 20 by 40 rink, but nice to have, easy to wind up, or a 25 foot tape measure. And a rubber mallet. You can use a steel one as two, just a, a hand one. You don't need a big one to help uh, tap the brackets in. Okay, I've got the laser level here, so we're gonna show you how to check the pitch of the site first with the laser level. What you wanna do is get this four inches off the ground. What I did is I found a little flower pot that I had, so I'm gonna rest this on top of the flower pot, make sure it's level, and then we have Tyler down at the other side down there, and he's gonna find the laser dot. So however high the dot is down there is gonna be how high the water is because I've got your four inch minimum depth here. So we're gonna give this a whirl here. Real quick. Tyler's got the dot down there, I've got the level here, so I'm gonna go measure down there real quick. So our laser dot measures 10 inches down there, so that means there's actually a 10 inch drop on this area, and it looks relatively flat as you can see. This is a very flat area. I had the yard leveled, had a rink here many years, I already know what the depth is, but this drops off 10 inches. So that means that we're gonna need at least a 10 inch board to keep the water in, higher if you're gonna be playing any hockey. The best recommendation is 16 inch board. So for our rink that we're gonna need five sheets of three quarter inch CDX plywood, ripped down into 16 inch pieces. Most lumber yards, you can just call them and tell them that. That's probably our most popular height that people use. You can use 24 inch and you can use 12 inch if you want. I would recommend against 12 inch just because of the height difference. This is a level area and we have 10 inches. You'd only have two inches of board to spare. So it's cutting a little bit too close. So we'll get the, uh, the rink staked out and then we'll go get the lumber. Okay, now we're gonna stake the area out. We're gonna take our tape measure, measure the two 20-foot sides, measure the two 40-foot sides, and run a string line so we can get the perimeter of our ring figured out and make sure it's all square. So here we go. We've got 
got the four corners staked out, so now we want to make sure it's square because if it's off square, the liner won't fit properly. So we're going to measure the cross angles in both ways and uh, make sure that those measurements are correct. So we've got a measurement of 43 feet 9 inches here, so we want to go to the halfway point. Perfect if we measure across the other way, 43 feet 9, and that stake is in the same spot right in the middle. Okay, so we're off a little bit, so we have to make some adjustments on the stakes to get it squared off. Okay, so we found our mistake where uh, the corners were slightly off. The measurements were an 18 inch difference, so we had to move some stakes 9 inches. So we're going to show you what we moved here real quick. So what Tyler's going to do down there is he's going to put the tape measure 9 inches past. And we're both going to move our stakes 9 inches equally. That way when we measure across, the measurement in the middle is exactly the same and we're square because the problem with it was, is the rink was like this. It was kind of crooked, it would have been a trapezoid, so you have to make sure it's square so that the liner fits properly. So now we're going to run our string line. So what you want to do is get the string line tied around your first stake and then go ahead and run that all the way around. This is an easy string line, so you just come and run it all the way around. There you go. Now your string line is run and you have the perimeter of your rink there. You can kind of check it out and need to go get the lumber. So we're going to go get that and bring it down. Okay, after you get all your boards laid out, there's going to be five eight footers long here to make your 40 foot and there's going to be two and a half on the ends so right now i only have two here we've got three down there so we're going to cut one board in half which will fill in the other four foot blank over here so now we just need to get our nice ring brackets in. okay we got the nice ring brackets here so we want to spread these out one every four feet around the perimeter of the rink on the outside of the line the woods on the inside so here we go easy way is just start stacking them on your arms so i've got 10 on my arm. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm better than the owner. I got 12. And since he can grab so many, I'm just going to take six this time. Okay, so now we've got our brackets all spread out, our boards all spread out, we're ready to start installing the brackets. One key point here, it's a lot easier to install these when the ground is thawed out and warm. Uh, right now during this demo video, it's June, it's a little, probably a little bit too warm, too early, don't need it this early, but you know, you want to get it in the ground before it freezes. Uh, you know, Canada probably, you know, if you can get it in before, probably before December 1st, and then even Minnesota area, out east, you might have a week or two after that but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put these in. It's relatively easy. We've already got our string line that we strung out all the way around the ring, which is outlining the entire ring. So what we wanna do is take this front spike, because it, when you put it in, it's gonna slide backwards. So this front spike goes on the string line. So we'll start out with this first bracket here, find our string line, take this front spike right on the string line, go ahead and move the string line forward so it's out of the way. Then you can Push it in a little bit like that. Step on here, step on here, and wiggle it. It's 
So it got in just about all the way. You can go ahead and take your string line and put it in your board holder. And you'll see that it'll be lined up here in a second. We got a little bit more room to go here. So what I want to do is get that pounded in. You can pound on here, right here, right on top, and right here. I like to hit the top and the back right here. Don't hit on the corners, you'll snap that off. So right here, you pound here. So that's it, your bracket's in, it's solid. The string line is perfectly in line with my board holder here. So as you can see, the string line falls right into the board holder here, and it's still perfectly in line with all the brackets. So then what we want to do is take your first board, set it into place, kind of run it right along your string line there, right at the end of the bracket, okay? And then you've got to get your next bracket here, which is your middle bracket. You don't have to be perfect. You can kind of get in the middle. If you want to be exact, you can measure it. You want to go about halfway. So you want to go about four feet, so right in this area right here. I'll just set the tape measure right where my four foot mark is. Take my board out, drop it down. My four foot mark was here. Again, make sure your string line's all taut. Take your front spike on the string line. Right here, take the string line, put it in your board holder. Go ahead and get step your bracket in a little bit. Just about all the way down. Okay, string line still intact. Set your board back up. You don't have to put it in the uh, holder. Get it in line. You're gonna want to move for this time. Hmm? The third bracket is actually gonna be shared between this board and the next board going into it. So we're gonna cut it in half. There's a line right here that cuts the bracket in half. So that line's gonna cut that bracket, the board right in half. So this board goes in one half, the next board goes in the other half. So we'll go ahead and get that set up. I just have to mark with my fingers, drop the board out of the way. Make sure your string line is all straight. Again, front spike on the string line. Move the string out of the way. Put it in your bracket board holder. After that's set, you can take your string line out. Take your first board. Slide it down. So you got half and half here. Half the board's in, half the board's out. Because like I said, the next board, that's where that's going. So your next board's gonna come in, slide in there, and that's your shared bracket right here. That's how that works. And then we're just gonna keep on going all the way down. And we'll get this all the board set up. by 40 rink of the box 16 inch boards all the way around on the ends there's going to be two eight foot boards which is 16 feet there's going to be a, approximately four foot gap in there that's where our extra piece of wood is here so we're going to have to cut this in half what we need to do is measure each one it's not an exact science it might not be exactly four feet we'll measure it that one's about 44 inches And this one is 45 inches, so we'll take that 8 foot board, which is two 48 inch pieces that we cut in half, we'll cut it into a 44 and a 45, and we'll slide those into place and then we'll get the liner put in. Okay, we got the two sections of board cut, we got the 45 and the 44, so Tyler and I will get these in place.
Okay, so there's a 20 by 40 rink in the box frame, all set up. One other thing that you want to do is uh, probably remove the boards now, take the string out so it's not underneath the boards all winter and wind that back up, so we're going to do that right now. Okay, and then on most rinks, what you're going to want to do on these uh, brackets, because there isn't any support going this way, you want to pick up some screws, just a little three-quarter inch screw. Take a, a screw gun if you have it. Uh, hand screwing would be probably take a long time. Basically, just set it right in the back of the tab here. Turn your drill on. Hold your board against the bracket. Just snug, that's all you need. And now the board's solid. It's not going to go anywhere. Can't go backwards because you got the nice bracket support. Won't go forward because it's there. And then when you come up to the boards where there's two of them, what you want to do is put one in one board, one in the other board. So then that way it's uh, everything's locked in place. Um, so that's all you have to do there. We're not going to do that right now because we're going to take this back down so we don't have to put them all in. And now we'll show you how the liner goes in. Okay, we're going to put the liner in now. Take the liner, set it about in the middle of the ring. It's going to unfold and unroll. We're going to unroll it first. tapes, just pieces of the patch tape, stick it to the liner to the wood, liner to the wood. So we're going to do that right now and then uh, get it all set for water. Okay, we're going to cut little pieces of the patch tape and attach the other side and then we're going to pull the liner taut so that we can do this side. We don't want to really tape the side yet because the liner is not all the way down in the board so we'll do that all at one time. Once that's done, what will happen is you put the water in, and as the water's filling up, what's going to happen is it'll start putting pressure on the liner on the inside. So it'll pull this tight, as you can see here. So if it starts to get too tight, okay, the tape will break loose. That's what you want to happen until there's water in there. So all you have to do if it breaks loose, just re-stick it back in the spot where it got tight. Now when it gets tight, it's not going to come up anymore. And then eventually you can staple gun it on the back side here. That'll hold the liner in place. The other option is to use a bumper cap, which we have a sample here. And if you have the bumper caps, then you don't have to use the tape or staple. All you do is open these up the first year, put your hand down the, the bumper cap, the hole in there, go like this, open them up, slide it on, push it down. And that's the classic nice rink look with the bumper cap on there. So it's a great accessory. It comes on. If, it, if the liner gets too tight, all you do is just pick it up, let the liner fall in, and push it back down. 
and that'll hold everything in place and it's great for any play that falls and that's not going to really hurt them or what have you and it gives a visual of the edge of the ring so and then you fill it up with water let it freeze that's it skate have fun okay now we're going to take it down uh, we're going to fold up the liner first and then pull all the boards out and brackets and put them back in the package it's a lot easier coming down than it is going up next year. If you're going to save it, just keep it out of the sunlight, away from rodents or what have you. If you're not, it's recyclable. It's recycle number four. So you can throw right in the recycle bin for the recycle man. Another great benefit of the nice rink system, there was actually a big rink here last year, right in this area. It's June 16th today. And you can tell the grass doesn't even look like it had a rink on it. The brackets do very minimal damage to the turf. Just give them a kick. They come right out and basically you rough up the grass, can't even tell they were there. There's a tiny little X mark in the grass, that's it. Very, very, very little damage. Also in inside. Also in. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna take the area. Long way to go, so <laughs> you can stop. <laughs>